Naturally, you would think that the notion of power is likely to be incorporated by Juno or Jupiter as they are the highest gods on Olympus according to the literature. But nevertheless, in art, other gods were more popular for that purpose as we will see. We start with Apollo. Apollo, following the ancient myths, was the son of Jupiter and the Titanian woman Leto. He is described as the beautiful god of light and sun. This concept, adapted in European art, derives from the Greek gods Helios and Apollon, with whom Apollo is equated with since about the 6th century. The narration of Apollo's power is based on the story of him slaying a dragon-like beast, the giant Phaeton, at the beginning of the Olympic gods' era, and since he was seen as the preserver of justice and the hegemony of the gods. Since Renaissance times, he was being established as the patron of the arts, most attractive with eternal youth, depicted with an athletical body and even characterized by slightly feminine lines of beauty, which underline his role of the leader of the Nine Muses. In this German classicist painting, for example, we see him surrounded by them and their mother Memosyne. His main attribute in that context is the lyra, an instrument and symbol of the poets from which the term lyric derives. Apollo is playing it with great virtuosity. Besides that, his main attribute is that of the laurel wreath, symbol of victory and reference to healing as the touch of the arts was said to heal the soul. In this painting, Apollo is shown with two laurel wreaths. One crowns him and the other one is intended to crown the artist. As muses accompany Apollo, they, symbolically speaking, should surround the artist himself. But that is just one side to him. Moreover, Apollo is very powerful and even aggressive from time to time, striking revenge whenever the honor of the gods is contested. He is judge over death or salvation. He flayed the skin of the Saturmasias because he claimed to play his music better than Apollo. In this role as a revenger, he is shown with an arc, arrows and a quiver. Whenever the hegemony of the gods is questioned, Apollo restores the hierarchical order by striking those who dare to doubt. Apollo, as we know now, is an ambiguous figure and characterized by this enormous tension between his role of the patron and that of the merciless revenger. His temper, but also his power and virtuosity, predestines him for rulers to identify with him and to decorate themselves with his glory. Very important for that is the notion of Apollo being the god of the sun. Especially after the establishment of the heliocentrism, which is the scientific determination that all planets, including planet Earth, revolve around the Sun at the center. The most famous adaptation of that for the representation of power with political expansion was surely that of Louis XIV, who called himself the Sun King or Roi du Soleil in French. Since the Renaissance, it was common to use mythological figures systematically to enhance the visual and narrative mediation of power, but Louis XIV took it to extremes. Reigning in the middle of the 17th century, the French king is still famous for imagining himself as the center and therefore the metaphorical son of the state. The allegorical use of Apollo was therefore not far. Louis XIV centralized France and made his court in Versailles the absolute center of the kingdom which nobody, especially not the nobility, could abstain from. He ritualized his whole day all revolving around him, just as the planets revolve around the sun. He was holding the absolute and unchallenged power, stroke against his aristocratical opposition and therefore consolidated absolutism as his form of regency. Louis XIV had an emblem developed showing the merge of his face and the sun sending beams which are depicting his power and expansion. Here is an example of the grid in the royal gardens of Versailles that you can still see today. 
to stage himself according to his vision, he created a whole program of visual representation, the most known and most opulent being that of the Palace of Versailles, which he had enlarged to monumental measures since 1668, supervised by the architect Louis Levaux and the landscape designer André Le Notre. The concept of Versailles, and especially its famous gardens, can be summarized as the dominion of the human mind and its cultivated artificial artifacts over nature. This enormous building gave him the chance of having an elaborate program of imagery surrounding himself as the royal center of everything. Hence, the pictorial allegories describing him as an antique god all belong to his excessive view of himself and how he wanted to be seen. In the Garden of Versailles, we see the so-called Fountain of Apollo, which shows the prominent role of the idea of Apollo as a concept for the monarch. But there are even more obvious ways to connect him with the ancient god. In this portrait of the king and its family, Louis XIV embodies Apoll. Painted in 1670 by the French court portraitist Jean Nocré, it gives us a really good impression of how the royal family wanted to be perceived as glorious as the Olympic gods. The most important figure here, of course, is Louis himself. But how can we tell that he here is depicted as Apollo? We use our knowledge of iconography. So what we see here is a laurel wreath crowning the king, a lura being held by two little putti and quite small but visible, the symbol of the sun on top of his ruling scepter. The rest of the personnel is staged as several other Olympic gods and goddesses aligning with their political function and power. With this example, we can see how important mythological imagery really was as it reinterprets visual hierarchies. Louis depicting himself as the Roi du Soleil, the Sun King, is quite fierce, taking into account that in times before, metaphors of the sun and the light in general were implicating the notion of God or Christ himself, so to say the one and only in a Christian sense. He saw himself in the tradition of the ancient emperors which ruled Europe before. This is why we often see him in antique robes and clothing.